areas around Yellowstone Lake. It's my favorite part of the park. There's no reason for it to stop, although it might come in spurts. Our images show wider parts and narrower parts, so it's like slugs of material that are flowing in a sewer line. These eruptions are enormous. The amount of material erupted from them, huge. Yellowstone National Park is home to a wide variety of natural wonders, but it is also home to a number of perilous situations. Visitors have died in encounters with wild animals, exposure to noxious gases, hypothermia, lightning strikes, being hit by falling trees, falls, drownings, accidental shootings, stove explosions and murder throughout the last 150 years. According to the assessment of both natural and unnatural causes, the most prevalent cause of death in Yellowstone is a tie at 12 for motor vehicle crashes and heart attacks. This may sound frightening, but nature itself may be the greatest destructive force in Yellowstone. The likelihood of a catastrophic disaster on a never before seen magnitude makes the eruption of Yellowstone's supervolcano one of the most feared events in recent history. Despite the fact that many people are unaware of the dangers it poses, it appears to be one of the most realistic threats to the majority of life on Earth, potentially leading to the extinction of the human species. Speculation that the volcano will only erupt in the next 100,000 years is fading, and researchers who previously thought Yellowstone was a dormant volcano are rethinking. When a park ranger indicated that something was going on inside the park, the authorities were forced to seal it down. What has just happened, and what is the reason for this closure? Stay with us till the end, because the Yellowstone supervolcano may just be waking up from its slumber. In July 1981, Witnesses watched in terror as 24-year-old David Kerwin jumped headfirst into Yellowstone's boiling Celestine pool. Kerwin had been on the hunt for his friend's Great Dane Moosey, who had escaped from the back of the pickup truck and leaped into the boiling hot spring, which was estimated to be 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Kerwin quickly realised he had made a mistake. He emerged from the scorching water in seconds and tried to pull the dog to shore. Kerwin survived, but the dog did not. Kerwin's friend suffered third-degree burns on his feet while assisting in the removal of Kerwin's badly charred body off the rock shelf. Kerwin managed to get to his feet before falling backward. His friend and another onlooker escorted him to the parking lot for aid. That was dumb. How bad do I look? Kerwin reportedly asked his buddy as he collapsed onto the boardwalk. Kerwin's eyes were completely white as if he were blind and his horribly burned skin was rapidly peeling off. Kerwin's flesh began to flay off when another man on the scene ran up and attempted to remove one of his shoes. Rangers later discovered two huge chunks of skin shaped like human hands beside the spring. With third degree burns covering his entire body, emergency personnel transported Kerwin to the clinic at Old Faithful, where he was treated by a burn specialist who could only numb the agony at the time. Kerwin died the next morning in a Salt Lake City hospital. Moosey never made it out, his body was never retrieved although oils from his body caused minor eruptions in the water the next day. Kerwin's death is one of more than 20 documented deaths caused by tourists falling or willingly jumping into Yellowstone Hot Springs in the book Death in Yellowstone, Accidents and Foolhardiness in the First National Park by attorney and longtime Yellowstone tour guide, park ranger and historian Lee H. Whittlesley. As a lawyer and a park ranger, he saw the book as a means to legally safeguard the park while also alerting tourists to the many hidden and obvious dangers that one might encounter when visiting the park. Whittlesley reminded his readers several times throughout the book that Yellowstone is not a theme park with tame animals and trail guardrails. He described the park as full of hidden and obvious dangers, which is why he felt obliged to convey his cautionary tale while also documenting the site's storied history. To his amazement, Whittlesley learned that drowning or being boiled to death in one of the park's 10,000 springs, geysers, mud pots and steam vents posed a far graver threat than being attacked by a wild animal. He discovered that the beautiful green hues of the geyser and springs seemed to attract people to their edges with the first thermal injury dating back to 1871 when Truman Everts, a member of the 1870 Washburn expedition, decided to take a soak after being separated from his group and lost for 37 days. In the 1880s, 
there was an increase in the number of visitors to the park, which resulted in an increase in the number of hot springs related accidents that occurred among visitors as well as staff of the park. One of the worst reported incidents in Whittlesley's book included four Chinese laundrymen who were flung in the air and scaled to death after a geyser burst one night. Despite the author's acknowledgement of the story's flaws, it was picked up by national media sources. The National Enquirer headlined, Boiled Chinaman in the Yellowstone Park region, with a big woodcut illustration depicting people, pigtails and wash tubs being spouted into the air. The most recent death occurred in 2016, when a 23-year-old guy from Portland, Oregon, slipped and fell into a hot spring near Porkchop Geyser. However, one of the park rangers recently disclosed something far more horrific happening beneath the ground. This volcano's activity has been closely and continuously monitored since 1923, but recent magma activity has caused the ground to swell and rise by up to 25 centimetres, or 10 inches. The rise leveled off, indicating that the magma was cooling and hardening. This was an early indication to scientists who had been monitoring the sleeping monster's behaviour that it may be ready to awaken. To predict what to expect from a prospective Yellowstone eruption, scientists have turned to the last three known eruptions. The size of all three eruptions was tremendous. The evidence of the most recent one, which occurred over 600,000 years ago, can still be seen across Yellowstone National Park's immense span of land. The first eruption occurred approximately 2.1 million years ago at Huckleberry Ridge. Approximately 580 cubic miles of volcanic ash, gases, magma and other materials were discharged. This eruption is now officially regarded as the largest in Yellowstone National Park's and North America's history. Mesa Falls was the second known Yellowstone eruption occurring 1.3 million years ago and forming Henry's Fort Caldera west of Yellowstone. The smallest of the three Yellowstone eruptions, this one produced approximately 67 cubic miles of volcanic ash. The Lava Creek eruption, the third major Yellowstone eruption, is the most recent known. The volume of material ejected was less than half that of the Huckleberry Ridge eruption, but it covered a wider surface area. Along with the magma and other volcanic debris, a considerable amount of volcanic ash and gas was ejected with tremendous force. Unfortunately, the destructive effects of this monster were not limited to Yellowstone National Park. Furthermore, the majority of the continental United States was buried by magma and volcanic debris. In fact, part of the eruption's debris has been located as far away as Louisiana, which is hundreds of miles away from Wyoming. As a result of these cataclysmic eruptions, the Yellowstone volcano sucked in surrounding forests, mountains and anything else that it could before collapsing in on itself and leaving a depression that is still present today. This depression is known as the Yellowstone Caldera. The most recent comparable volcanic eruption is the infamous Mount St. Helens volcanic eruption in 1980. This eruption killed 56 people and many animals while destroying hundreds of square kilometres of land in Washington and Oregon. While the St. Helens eruption is a good comparison, it pales in comparison to the last Yellowstone supervolcano eruption, which is thought to have been a thousand times more powerful than the St. Helens eruption. The last Yellowstone eruption must have totally buried a large area of the continent due to all the hot ash, molten rock and poisonous gases that were blasted up thousands of metres into the stratosphere. The magma and gases surged across the terrain at breakneck speed, destroying everything in their path. Everything had burned and the landscape was covered in ash. Some of the most significant evidence of the previous eruption can be seen in the Yellowstone Caldera. This depression is 30 miles wide and 45 miles long, with a substantial volcanic material from the eruption still visible in the Lava Creek Tuff area. While everyone wishes for the best, the geological evidence cannot be ignored. A large volcanic explosion on the scale of one that occurred over 600,000 years ago is something for which no one, let alone any country, can effectively prepare. It will be a disastrous disaster. While specialists do not rule out the possibility of an eruption, they hope for the best. Meanwhile, officials at Yellowstone have identified a big block of magma that has begun pulsing, and experts are unsure whether minor volcanic occurrences such as hydrothermal bursts or lava flows are fair to predict. 
the underlying activity has reached a level that has sparked speculation about when and how powerful the volcano will erupt. The frequency of earthquakes in the Yellowstone region has increased in recent years. Yellowstone experiences between 1,000 and 3,000 earthquakes each year. Some of these quakes are minor shocks that go unnoticed. Scientists can use some of the most advanced seismic detection and monitoring technology to assess the level of activity in the magma pool below. A reservoir can be discovered barely beneath the surface and rather close to the earth in Yellowstone National Park, which is home to a subsurface magma lake. The magma chamber is the name given to this reservoir. The vibrations, whether felt or not, tell scientists how quickly the magma chamber is filling up. The increasing severity and frequency of earthquakes around the park may indicate that a new batch of magma is being injected into the magma chamber. It's tough to say what these quakes mean for Yellowstone National Park. Nobody knows what Yellowstone will do next. There isn't much else to say save the conclusions that can be derived from investigating the Yellowstone volcano's distant destructive past. Because of how long ago the eruptions occurred, evidence from previous Yellowstone supervolcano eruptions cannot be relied on to accurately predict what the volcano will do next. According to a Yellowstone National Park system alert, the massive dome-shaped uplift is constantly rising in size. This is irrefutable proof of rising volcanic activity beneath the ground of Yellowstone National Park. Yellowstone officials have been forced to close the park as the volcanic uplift continues, making it inaccessible to visitors and even many researchers. This mini-lockdown was implemented to protect people in the case of a volcanic eruption which appears to be closer now than it has been in the last 600,000 years. Let us know what you think in the comments section below.